Hello, students. Good evening, everyone. Hello, can you listen to me? Hello, teacher. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome to everyone. It's a great pleasure to have you here. One more night to our English class. So it's a great pleasure to have you here, guys. And also getting ready to, you know, to start, you know, it's a great day. Uh, very special because we start this month, right? Uh, December. It. People love this month a lot, right? Am I wrong? Yeah, so it's a great month after, you know, different things that we have developed, we have done during this year, experiences and situations that we all the time faced. We are uh, closing November and also start December with different projection perspectives and goals for the next year. And that's very valuable to take. And most of the time people are thinking about vacations uh, because December, some of them uh, are vacations and great for them. But for some others, they don't like have vacations. So, Mirna, do you have vacations on December or not? No, teacher. Oh my God. So, no. It's a normal month. It's a normal month for you, or it's a, a little special because people say that, you know, they enjoy it a lot in December. So, what about your case? Yes, I enjoy a lot because the season is is good, is happy, all of them are happy and and celebration, but in the work, in my job, for example, is we have to to end uh, the plan and then start the the next year plan. And yeah, we have a lot of things to do for the next year. And we have to close the the this year in December. <laughs> it's oh, not, it yeah, it's busy <laughs> to me December, but I like the season. I love this season because it's everything is shared with your family, your friends, celebration. And it's the end of the year. It's is 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 good season for me. I like it. Yeah, so definitely that it's part of the experience. I mean, because we conclude a year and also think about the next one. And also we think about what we have already done, what things we have reached, what things we have gotten. And because every year, I don't know if that happens with you guys, that we think about, you know, what goals do we have for the next year. We're talking about 2024 and also thinking about some things that you would like to get, plans, things that you want to get after it. This time, perhaps December, we think about what we have gotten, what we have reached, what things we do, couldn't complete, what things completed. So we just analyzed about well, what things we have experienced during this year. And that's good because it can help us to keep on working a lot, following dreams and also like important points in that case. And, uh, uh, at the end of December, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, at the end of December, when they start in January, everything uh, start the diet. <laughs> of course, it's like, yeah. Because in December, uh, you eat a lot in December. Yeah. And also the thing it's, it's a it's a good goals. <laughs> and do you know the term, for example, in December after the twenty, uh, December twenty fourth and it and thirty first, uh, December thirty first. People think about the word recalentado, right? The, when you cook and uh, you, you eat. Uh, it's delicious. <laughs> it's uh, the I, best. <laughs> yeah. And, and also something interesting about this year is like we're talking about in um, Christmas bonuses. People think about this topic and they are like happy. So, I mean, for, for some people and uh, they they got some uh, Christmas bonuses. For example, Emerson, are you getting Christmas bonus this, this year or not? Yes, I have a bonus uh, at the end of the year. Okay, waiting with motivation is the Christmas bonus. Yes, it's motivated for this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and people deserve it because, I mean, we have worked a lot. We have done a great job. So, you know, after it, this is the reward for the, everything that you have done, the, the, the time we have in the company. So it's important. And um, and that is good, right? So everything is celebration, parties, and also to evaluate, reco recover from different things. That's very valuable. Well, um, we, we are uh, 15 right now, so welcome to everyone. It's a great pleasure to have you here, guys, from one more night to learn and practice with our English classes, as we always have a personal commitment. 
And also one of the goals that perhaps you have for this year, 2023, is like many of you have been studying English, concluding a process in advanced because we finished this uh, part of this level in advanced one. And that is a great advantage. Imagine uh, at the end of the 2023, you will be able to, uh, to be in the level advanced and you will continue working a lot with that. This is another personal goal. It's like when someone decides to study English for the next year and I have some friends that they say, you know what? I don't think I'm thinking about studying English the next year. I just want to study an academy, look for better chances, like a better job. And also they like project the next year's study. So you are going forward because you you know and manage the language nowadays. Well, let's continue. And um, yesterday we had a great class because we just had a feedback um, about the, the different generation gaps. We socialized some questions related to that one. We were talking about the coordinated conjunctions, like when we join into independent sentences or independent clauses. And today we're going to have a short feedback of this and a new topic that I will share with you that is similar or related to the topics that we are developing. And this is like video conference number 24th. And we talk about the efforts to bridge the gap of generations. What's the main topic about this class? Is to try to join all generations to work together. that are no differences about different generations that everybody should respect in the best way and they learn and maximize your capacities to work in the same team, to have the same results, the same goals, the same path. So that's why the topic is efforts to bridge the gap of generations. It doesn't matter if you are a millennial, it doesn't matter if you're a baby boomer, it doesn't matter if you're generation Z. So you have to work together and show the best of all of you guys in that case. And that is part of the class that we're gonna share today um, of one of the main topics to, to socialize. So I can say that at the end of this unit, you will be expert about generations, right, Gaps? Because you know a little more about millennials, you know about baby boomers, you know about Generation C, about um, Alpha. So being honest with you guys, we were talking with some friends about generations. And uh, for some circumstances of life, we talk about generations. We talk about millennials. And, and then I was like, Oh my God, we're talking about that. I'm thinking, I'm in the class with my students at nine. And suddenly when we're talking about that, I, I thought about you guys because exactly we're talking about generations. And also how each generation changes in the way they live, with experience, situation, season, etc. Look at the next. And also, and uh, we had a short review about the fanboys that uh, many of you were, were describing in um, important aspects. Look at this, look at the next one. Next. Let's see, let me show you here. One moment, please. Okay. Okay, uh, as we were saying yesterday, we just like were like trying to explain in a briefly way the reasons about the coordinated conjunctions. We're saying that the coordinated conjunctions join independent closest, independent sentences, right? So I don't know if uh, Josman can help us to read the the well the information here in the slide. Okay, teacher. Good evening. Coordinating conjunction. Coordinated conjunction join independence clause. Fanboys is a memory tool for the coordinating conjunction in English. Continue? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. And I went to bed early yesterday for I got started. My sister and I went shopping last week. I would neither drink nor dance. This room is whole but comfortable. Do you play the piano or the violin? He likes to play tennis, get his favorite, uh, favorite sport in its football. I was very tired. 
So I land bid early yesterday. Thank you so much. There's so much students joining. Okay, so you can also check and um, a brief way with a word, the description about each one. For is related to a reason, as I said yesterday. I told you that we use for for reasons. Also, I said that and is for additions, when we add more information, when you match two ideas, nor and not, right? So when we talk about two situations in a negative form. And then we have but, that is related to contrast. In one thing, we do this one, and the other one does something totally different. So we just about contrast. Then we have or that is related to auctions, or you can have this one, like auctions in this auction or the next one. Yet it's related to outcome, right? And as you can see the example, well, some students joining. So it's related to outcomes. It's your favorite sport, like this one, uh, but this is favorite sport. So you can also talk about the outcomes. And so it's related to results. One second. Oh, some students are joining right now. Okay, let's see. Oh, my, my, my computer is like a little rebellious today, guys. It's not following my instructions. Okay, much better. All right, so let's see what's going on here. So we have uh, uh, the following basic exercises. After that we have like practice, it's gonna be a piece of cake for you guys. So I'm gonna give you a short time to select the best choice about the fanboys to complete the statements. Like the examples we have right there, the first one. Um, this old uh, woman is neat or polished. And then we have the other one, Roshan. Uh, she tried to learn Chinese. It was too difficult. Do we have two different sentences? Last night I was very tired and I went to sleep. So check the, the following example here in that case. So um, I want you to uh, complete in a briefly way the statements. Join the two sentences using the coordinate conjunctions. Let's go.
Are you ready? Yes, no yet? No yet, teacher, in my case. Okay. No, yes. Okay, so we'll wait like a couple of minutes to try that okay. case. So as you, I I understand um it's important to try it. You know, those exercises we get familiar with them. And then it's gonna be a kind of easy to use the coordinated conjunctions. The practice makes a difference. Okay, guys, what about now? Ready? Yes? Yes, teacher. I finish. Great. So let's see what's going on here in the following statements. We're going to check the first one. Who wants to help me to read? And guys, don't forget if you made mistakes about, you know, selecting the best choice, because the most important thing is that we get familiar with the vocabulary and expressions. After we do that one, it's going to be a kind of easy. We are adapted to the vocabulary, the accent, and the, and the structures. Look at this one. Number one. Me, teacher. Yes. This old woman spoke neither Polish nor Russian. That is correct, because there are two negative statements. And also, we just like um, clarified um, in that case, the word, because the clue word is neither, right? Neither polished, neither polished nor okay. Russian. Great job. Number two. Me, teacher. Yes. She tried to learn Chinese, but it is was too difficult. I mean, she, she learned that language, but, you know, it was difficult. So she got a contrast. The person, she got a contrast. So in that case, the best choice is that one. Great job, it's, but that's right. Number three, volunteer. Okay, number three. Me, teacher, can I? Yes. We have ticket for the cinema and number three, sorry. <laughs> Last night I was very tired, so I went to sleep. Exactly. Great jobs, consecutive actions. Yes, so I went to sleep. I went to bed. That's right. Number four. Well, me again, teacher. Okay. We have tickets for the cinema and the opera. Perfect. That's the answer. So we just end.
Next, number five. Would you like orange juice or cola? Uh, I prefer juice. <laughs> yes, that's right. The answer Me is too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So the answer um, is the or, right? So that's the best choice in that case. Excellent. Next, number six. This is Mary. She is very rich and she isn't happy. Mm, but I mean, the, there is not a sequence or there is like a contrast. It's bad. Ah, okay. Yes, because there's a con. She's very rich, but she's not happy. Would you be happy if you were rich? What do you think? Maybe? Could we? <laughs> Imagine you're rich, but you're not happy. Oh my God. I will be more than happy. So in that case, there is a contrast. Great job in that case. Next, number seven. He is good at math, yet her favorite subject is history. I'm, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? <laughs> she is good at math, yet his her favorite subject is history. That's correct. As we're saying in the previous one, uh, in the previous exercise, uh, we're saying that it doesn't match because first, well, she she's good at math. I mean, she's good at math, and and but history is the best for her. So in that case, yet will be the best choice. And the number eight, the last one. Yes. He easily paced the exam for he studied quite thoroughly. 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 Yeah, thoroughly. Okay. Yes, that's right. That's correct. So in that case, um, for it, it's the best choice because it's giving a reason. I like it. Okay, guys, I know that you are more familiar now with those exercises. Obviously, when we see those statements, we have to analyze in the best way uh, which one could be the best. But as I told you, I gave an important clue, and the best one is um, to check the context, contextualize each statement. And when we do that one, it's easier because we can analyze the point. Let's see the next um, exercise we have here. We pass this um, example and we will continue with the next topic that is important to reinforce. Well, there is a kind of statement. I just wanna um, show you a different screen. If you allow me a moment, please. One second. It's because I will share with you guys a uh, kind of an audio and I want you to listen, guys. The purpose is to identify are the stereotypes of all millennials in, in the workforce true? We have to analyze this kind of podcast. Uh, are the stereotypes of all millennials in the, work, in the workforce true? So in this case, you will listen to a guy talking about next generation leaders in the workplace. Um, and also there is a guide uh, that he's the guest and he um, he's a kind of CEO attorney and a senior sales and marketing executive. And also the goal about him is to help companies bridge the gap between uh, managers and our millennial workers. And also he's a kind of founder of CEO uh, of Lunchbox and different things like that. So it's going to give like some valuable information related to to millennials 
and also how can they um, develop in specifically millennials? How can they develop their skills? And I want you to listen carefully. And after we listen those uh, valuable points given by the speaker, I want you to get take notes in your notebook, in notes, um, notebook, I don't know. You can also take notes about the most important points because we're gonna take a short time to analyze what he said in some valuable details. So as I told you, in this unit, we will become experts about talking about generation gaps. And also how can we deal uh, with different people and we will become good managers because we know how to interact with them, how to guide them and to be uh, the better workers and show their best. So I'm showing you right now this link. I want you to listen to this podcast and also get the most important information about that. Um, uh, my question is, can you see the, the link? Oh, can you see the link, guys? Yes, teacher. Okay, so yes. I'll give you I'll give you this time to listen carefully, and then we're gonna talk about this audio. Good luck with this.
Okay, students, after listening to this um, very interesting conversation, important podcast, talk about some um, important points, like uh, stereotypes given by different generations, millennials, and also the way how we can also deal with some situations in a company. What I want you to do is like try to um, summarize with your own words what you understood about this conversation, what important points you took notes, and also what valuable details also we can also maximize, especially in our jobs and what we do. And as, as I told you before, it's really important to like listen people who got experienced, like this guy who got a lot of experience talking about some personal things and also important perspectives. I want you to practice. So we're gonna work in a breakup room. We're gonna take it in a briefly way, like five or less, five minutes the most. And because we have some other activities to develop. But I want you to socialize the, this podcast because it's very, very interesting. And then we're gonna try to summarize some valuable details about this uh, conversation. As I said, um, motivation is very valuable. It's very important, it's, be, it's very accessible and it can help people to reach their personal goals in a job. If we're not motivated, if we're not encouraged, it's not gonna be hard. If you don't have a passion and commitment, it's going to be impossible that the generations could work in the same rhythm, uh, same steps, same goals, in the same vision, so it's important. That's why in a company, there is a vision and a mission. What they want to do, how they are going to get it, what goals they have for there. So they are talking about some important aspects. So I want you to take a short time to socialize um, some important points taking uh, in this conversation. So for this, we're gonna work in the breakup rooms. We're gonna try to be very brief, a small group, so you can also uh, discuss well. What I understood about this, this podcast is that we had to work hard, that we don't have to stop. We had to try to have an important connection, something that attracts the attention of you know generations, etc. So look at your screen. I'm creating the groups, accept the invitation, and practice. So guys, I invite you to join the conversation. So the groups are now in the meetings. So your participation is really important in these conversations.
drive them to build a culture at the higher result in the company. Yes, yes. Yes. Um, how many people, millennial, uh, are working in your company? A lot. Of... More or less? The average? Maybe, I believe uh, there are um, 16%. Or the employees person. in my company are uh, junk. It's the person in my company. The workforce, 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 first is 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 very young. Uh, the age, the average age, it is around twenty six years. Very 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 young. The the work. What's the work first work? How do you say the correct words? Employees. 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 Workforce. Workforce. Workforce es como es fuerza laboral, pero se entiende como personal también, ¿verdad? Uh, which one? Workforce. Work, workforce. Workforce. Como fuerza laboral. Uh, uh, yes, the workforce is like the personnel. It's the staff, personnel, crew. We yeah, have so people engaged or in or available for work. Yes. Workforce. 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 Also, workforce. people call, there's a new word too, if you have heard about the word staff. Uh, like this one, look at the chat. A staff, okay. And in an, there is another one that is in an informal, that people say crew. It's like an informal way to say that there is a group. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Jose Carlos. Hi, good evening. I'm sorry. Yes. I, I have almost already to my home. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I have a, a Friday very busy. Is, is your daughter? Yeah, she's my daughter. Oh, she looks adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How, how old is she? Three. Three years. Oh, very good. Yeah. Very, very... Imagine. She's a baby. And coming soon, bilingual too. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay, very good. Okay. I, I don't know, was... if, I don't know if, if you... Do you want to give us our your opinion? Uh, I'm sorry. I, I was I have been driving to my home when I was listening the the conversation. So for that reason, I don't pay close attention to this to the small thing or details. And yeah. uh, I'm not ready for to provide any professional opinion about the the homework. Okay. Okay. Jose Salvador, are you there? Yes. Yeah. Yes, at the moment, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Yes, I'm here. Where? What are the other opinion? Uh, finish here. Hi, uh, you you finished to socialized. Um, you finished. Um, uh, hello, you, you finished guys to socialize um, or not?
uh, Juan Carlos y Frida. We we have uh, we had to to get we had to get study and work hard. Where? Mm, repeat, please. No, I, I told I told you uh, uh, this day, I don't know, in my case, I, I don't know uh, why I feel tired. I think because it, it, today is the last day of the week. But uh, I don't understand because uh, in my case, uh, uh, this day was uh, very easy. Yes. But always I feel tired. <laughs> yes. Maybe because Oh, thank you guys for the interaction. You know, that was a good practice. Definitely that we took advantage about this um, conversation we have together. And that is one of the most valuable details. Well, we're gonna check the attendance list right now. So you listen your name, you say present. So just allow me to check the, the list, please. Okay, let's see. Um, Carlos Alberto Dominguez. Uh, Carlos Ernesto Hernandez. Edwin Antonio Quinteros. Present. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present teacher. Thanks. Uh, Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Present teacher. Um, Jose Bernardo Lopez. Jose Carlos Argueta. Present teacher. Thanks. Um, Jose Salvador Bernal. Present teacher. Thanks. Uh, Josman Atilio Serrano. Present. Uh, Juan Carlos Herrera. Present teacher. Uh, Kevin Alfredo Lucero. Present. Nelson Alberto Peraza. Present. Osman Enrique Hernandez. Present, teacher. Rafael Alexander Serna. 
Present teacher. Ricardo Ernesto Pérez. Present teacher. Um, Cifrido Ernesto Gómez. Present. Wendy Maricela Ramírez. Present teacher. Eh, Mirna Elizabeth Alvarenga. Present. En uh, Manuel Antonio Escamilla. Uh, Manuel. Okay. okay, so we were like discussing in the in the groups. According to the speaker, he, that he he's a CEO, uh, a chief executive officer, and also he was talking about the the stereotypes. What are the perspectives for embologists according to their generations, and also that uh, insisting in the motivation, insisting in the organization, and also construction of a good environment. So that's why it's a very very important to emphasize valuable details when having responsibilities in a company. They have to work in the same rhythm path, no matter what generation is that. If they focus with their skills, they can reach all the goals are possible in the future. So that's why I could get valuable information in the conversation. Well, let's continue with the next activity. And, um, we have also uh, a topic that is related to sentence fragments, runs on and comma splices. And um, if you remember about the sentences run on are sentences that are like two or three sentences. Those sentences don't have a commas or a period. So when the reader read the sentences, it, they, they don't make pauses and we're like, oh my God, reading a lot. And we understand ideas, but are not separated by commas or also are not separated by periods. And, and sometimes for readers, it could be a little bit confusing. That's why it's important, as we know, to respect the commas and also the periods when reading a book, reading an article, reading something, because we need to make pauses when reading. That's why the run-ons are the two or three sentences that are not separated by comma or periods. Is that clear? Uh, say yes or not. Yes. Exactly, right? So uh, we were just, we were like reading. Sometimes people write sentences and they don't separate the ideas by commas they don't separate ideas by periods. They need to separate them because when we read, we need to make pauses. It is like, um, as, as there is a very common word in English, uh, the uh, tongue twisters. Do you know the tongue twisters? Do you know a tongue twister, by the way? No? Yes, teacher. No. You know, in English or in Spanish? Do you know the tongue oh. twister? And both. Oh my God, good, Emerson. So, you know, tongue twisters are like, you know, some words that I have written or this, uh, I don't know, the accent, or et cetera. So we say in Spanish, like, trabalenguas, right? Those, those, do you know some tongue twisters? Like, trabalenguas. And sometimes when we don't separate sentences by commas or period, it's like if we are trying a tongue twister. So that's why I will share with you guys uh, the link of a video that we cannot share by this man. Remember that for some circumstances, we're not allowed to share videos in my screen. That's why I'm sending you guys some links. I want you to um, check the following video related to fragments. And um, you will see this video. One second. Uh, I need to make sure that you have the, can you see the video? Oh, can you see the link? Do you see the link? Okay, I will give you two minutes to check. Um, 
I will give you the uh, some minutes to check this uh, video, and then we're going to introduce the topic for today. Let's go then.
Are you ready? Okay, are you ready, guys? You saw the video? Okay, welcome to lesson six. Um, Hello. This is the last lesson in our first unit. Okay, guys, do you watch the video? Hello. Did you watch the video? Yes, teacher, I watched the video. Yeah. Okay, so the question is, what can I do to avoid the run ons and comma splices? What should I do? In the video, it was mentioned some tips to avoid the, the run on sentences. What do you remember that it was mentioned in the in this video? There's three specific choices to avoid this run on sentences who got them or who listened to them period semicolon and comma and with a conjunction? Uh, what conjunction? What kind of conjunction? So, so. Um, core D? Coordination conjunction, sorry. For, and, but, so. Excellent. Congratulations. Coordinating conjunctions. So we can also avoid by commas, by semicolons, and a comma plus a coordinated conjunction. The three possible ways to avoid the run on sentences or in comma splices. So, because as I said, there are independent sentences that need, need to be separated. Great job, guys. That was the point. Well, so that's why uh, you were like discussing and as a review because we studied that before. And that would be good to make sure that we understand and have a clear idea about this one. That's why those topics were like in a review because we have studied them before and we're going to study them back and also make sure that we understand the sentences. So, uh, Juan Carlos, can you help me to read the questions? What are run on sentences? Um, uh, what are uh, run on sentences? Okay. okay. Pronoun sentences are type of grammar mistake that happen when two or more clauses are joined in correctly. Okay, I continue. Okay. Yes. Uh, what are the different kinds of pronoun sentences? Uh, there are three types uh, of pronoun sentences. A few sentences is when clauses are, are joined with not a punctuation. A comma play is when clauses are joined with only a comma and nothing else. And a pol policy policy and policy and uh -huh. is when the sentence is used to many conjunctions uh, or more conjunctions that's necessary. Uh, who can you fix a uh, run sentence? You can fix the uh, run on sentences used by adding a semicolon or a conjunction with a comma between the clause. Alternate, alternate, alternatively, 
you can simply split the sentences in two or more separate sentences. Thank you so much, Ray. So remember that we said that uh, run on sentences are grammar, grammar mistakes, especially when two more clauses are joined incorrectly and those are not separated as it is or as they are. So they need to be separated. But if they are not separated by commas, semicolons or comma plus a coordinated conjunction, that becomes a mistake. That's why it's called run-on sentences. And as you mentioned, and thank you for that, is that the different kind of run-on sentences, different like a few sentences, and also a comma spliced, and um, with only one comma, and also a uh, policy in town is when a sentence uses too many conjunctions or more conjunctions than necessary. So we could say that the policy in town is like, when a sentence contains, listen carefully, when a sentence contains multiple coordinating conjunctions, imagine that it is a but and nor, so they add in a sentence many coordinated conjunctions. That's why it is called polysyn and town. And also uh, typically and in close sessions resulting in emphasis. So that's why this is what we call in this statement. I'm going to send uh, in the group the definition about pollen uh, saying in town. So just give me a moment, please. So there are uh, common mistakes. That's why we need to focus and check what could be the best choice to separate ideas. Let me check right now this. Okay, I'm sending you this definition. So you can check that in chat. And the last one is, can you fix a round sentence? You can fix it by adding a semicolon or a conjunction with a comma between the closes. Alternative, alternative um, you can simply split the sentence into two or more separate sentences using periods. This is what we have been studying since the very beginning, how to avoid this kind of um, statements. And also Mirna gave us the three clues to separate it. Look at these examples. Uh, I need a volunteer for helping me to read the sentences. You can, I want you to emphasize the run of sentence that is the incorrect and what is the correct. Who wants to help me to read them? Me teacher, my turn. Thank you so much. Incorrect. The light inside is broken. The vending machine is still works. Incorrect. The light inside is broken, but the vending machine is still works. Incorrect. Red looks too aggressive for the living room walls. Let's try blue. Correct. Red looks too aggressive for the living room walls. Let's try blue. The zombie invasion finally come up. Come, but I am well prepared. So let's work together. The zombie invasion. Finally come, but I am well preparing. Let's work together. Scarves were popular last season. This season hats are popular. Scarves were the popular last season. This season hats are popular. The car will start eventually. You have uh, to keep trying. The car will start eventually. You have to keep training. Trying. Uh, keep trying. 
Okay, so you can see, guys, the examples about the the mistakes, the run-on sentences, and also how we can separate in the first one. Look at the second one is broken, comma, but, so we can separate them by a comma plus a coordinated conjunction that is bad related to contrast. In the second sentence about aggressive, we saw that we use a semicolon. Red looks too aggressive for the living room, walls, semicolon, and then we say, let's try blue. So we separated the two ideas. And the, the third sentence related to zombies, we can see that it was separated by the comma plus a coordinated conjunction. And then we talk about scarves. And also the, the other could be adding a comma, a period, I'm sorry, and the next word is start with a capital letter. As we say in Spanish, mayuscula, because after we, we finish a sentence, the next first letter should go in capital letter, as we do in Spanish. The capital letter T. So in that case, we separate it to ideas. When we separate different ideas by periods, the next, the first word is, should start with that capital letter. Next, the car will start eventually. You have to keep trying. The car will start eventually, semicolon. You have to keep trying. And you can see um, the, the statements. Any comment about those sentences? Any comment or not? I think not. Okay, so look at the next um, slide. That is the, um, exactly what we have said, the explanation that I gave you, but we need to read them in a better way. So I need the volunteer to read the first part. I'm talking about this one, this, this one. Who wants to help me to read it, please? Teacher. Yes, thank you. How to avoid wrong sentence part two. Look at the examples in the box, then, com then complete the exercise, exercise below. A wrong on sentence occurs when two or more independent clauses, uh, also known as completed sentence, are presented without any pronunciation to sign out when one ends and the other starts. Program generation based, based employee affinity groups are a waste, a waste of time manage, managers shouldn't assume people need special treatment. treatment. Correct, generation, generation based employee affinity groups are a waste of time Managers shouldn't assume people need a special treatment. I'm sorry, teacher. I try. Thank you so much, Ray. So we have also a extra examples A and B. So uh, I just want to to emphasize those uh, letters. Who wants to help me to you know to read the letter A examples in the letter A? Okay, letter A, who wants to help me to read these examples? Me, teacher. Thank you, Nelson. Uh, okay, letter A. Period after first clause plus capi capital letter. The run-on can be broken into two separate sentences. Run on. The boomer is mystified by Facebook. The millennial who wears flip flops in the office. Correct form. The boomer is mystif mystified by Facebook. Period. <laughs> the millennial who wears flip flops in the office. 
Thank you so much. Okay, I volunteer to read the exercise B. Uh, B. Me, teacher. Thank you. Um, letter B, semicolon before the second clause. Run on, generation-based employee, affinity groups are a waste of time manage, shouldn't assume people need a special treatment. <laughs> Correct. Generation-based employee affinity groups are a waste of time. Man managers shouldn't assume people need a special treatment. Thank you so much. So we can see uh, a next idea is we can separate ideas by period or commas or period. And obviously the next word is start with the, with a capital letter like the millennials. T is in cursive. Great job. So as we were, were saying, those, those uh, clues can help us to separate um, run-on sentences. Okay, now I want you to do the next thing. I want you to read the following sentences, identify the run-ons and correct them using the strategies mentioned in the box above. So I'm gonna take a brief time to check the attendance list again, as a second time. And uh, so please do me a favor to say present, please. Uh, Carlos Alberto Dominguez. Uh, Carlos Ernesto Hernandez. Edwin Antonio Quinteros. Present. Emerson uh, Ulises Moroy. Present. Um, Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Present. Thanks. Uh, Jose Bernardo Lopez. Present. Uh, Jose Carlos Argueta. Present, teacher. Thanks. Uh, Jose Salvador Bernal. Present, teacher. Nice. Present, teacher. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Josh Manatilio Serrano. Present, teacher. Uh, Juan Carlos Herrera. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Alfredo Lucero. Present. Nelson Alberto Peraza. Present. Osman Enrique Hernandez. Present, teacher. Rafael Alexander Cerna. Present, teacher. Ricardo Ernesto Perez. Present, teacher. Eh, Cifrido Ernesto Gomez. Present. Eh, Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Present. Eh, Myrna Elizabeth Alvarenga. Present. Eh, Manuel. Antonio Escamilla. Okay, now this is the moment to check. I want you guys to um, read the sentences and try to identify the run-ons and correct them using the strategies mentioned in the box about. As we were saying before, we had to analyze them and separate them in the right way. So I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to do that. And then we're gonna take a short time to socialize what we have. If you have any questions or doubt, you got a freedom to ask. And I'm just gonna be here listening, you know, helping you in the best way we can. 
Also, um, you can also chat here to, to say, teacher, I have the first one. Can you check if I have it right? So you can use the chat to this chat and we're gonna check the sentence. Good luck.
Okay, guys, uh, are you ready? Are you ready? Yes? Okay, um, I just want to ask. Um, Wendy, Osman, Jorge, are you ready, guys? Or not yet? Not yet, teacher. Okay, you need a little bit more time. I'm sorry? I will not. Not yet. Okay, we have Emerson. I will check that one and I'm just going to give an, a special feedback. Thank you. Okay, are you ready now? Yes? Yes, guys? Okay, let's go with the first one. And uh, Emerson, can you help us read the sentence, please? The first one. Sorry. Uh, my example, the mindset is to make the person 
your partner for e for its involved they need everything they do excellent thank you so much so in that case you you did something different um you use the comma plus uh coordinated conjunction that is for it okay can you tell me guys another way to um to use the same sentence and avoid run-ons what other way can i use to separate that i just saw teacher but i'm not sure that is correct and uh, four would be the best choice because you're giving a reason. And also another way to say the first one. Number one, uh, the mindset is to make the person you've partnered, period. It involves them in everything they do or semicolon, so we can use the three of them and nothing happens. Number two, we have, uh, let's see, Jose Carlos, right? Companies will need to embrace radical changes in recruitment, period, comma. I'm sorry, uh, there is a new change. Uh, need to embrace radical changes in recruitment, um, comma, but uh, corporate cultures will actively demonstrate respect and inclusions for its uh, multi-generational work phase. We have a but and we have a and. So maybe we're using two. Um, we also can use a semicolon. Or just we can separate them by period. Period, the next idea, period, the next idea. So we can separate it. Uh, Emerson says, uh, companies will need to embrace radical changes in recruitment for a corporate cultures with actively demonstrate respect and inclusions under multinational workforces. So as uh, similar to that. In general sentence, uh, bad could be a good choice because we're contrasting one point to other one. So we have this one. Look at the number three. Um, if, you can, if you can write the sentence in the chat will be very, very valuable for all of us. Number three, who wants to type the number three so we can also check, or you can activate the microphone and read what you have for a number three. Okay, number three, uh, no volunteers. Nobody with the number three? I'm going to try to read this here. Uh, we have replaced a real understanding of the individuals, period, in any given generation with full assumptions about entry generations. Uh, semicolon, this can be particularly destructive in the workplace. Is, I think <laughs> I use period at the end of individuals and semicolon.
But I'm not sure it's confused to me. This we have this. replaced the real understanding of the individuals in any given generation uh, with false assumptions about the entire generations. So you can see a comma, right? So perhaps this is one idea because there are no like some close ideas. So we have uh, replaced the real understanding of the individuals in the generations with the false assumptions about the entire generations. Maybe we can separate it by the period. Oh, by the comma and also the next sentence is, this can be particularly destructive in the workplace. So we have the first one and the second one. You can use a comma. But just, just, just we need to use comma or period is both. Period. In that case. Period. And the first word is capital, T capital or a comma and coordinated conjunction. Okay. Yes, that's the number three. Let's see the number four. It. The generations are catching up in terms of basic capacity capabilities, the activity for an interest and emphasis. So easy, what do you think? The number four is pretty easy, guys. Here you at the end of capital capability and interest, comma, and emphasis. Okay, so generations are catching up in terms of basic cap capabilities. Period, right? Period, yes, period. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They accept different interests, comma, and emphasis. Yes, emphasis, yes, that's right. Emphasis. That would be a good way of, of course. Uh, or we can use so, so they exhibit different interest and emphasis, right? Maybe we can use that. Great job. Next, number five, help me with that. Next. Who's next? Number Yes, uh, number number five. I use the semicolon because people perceive each other differently than they really are economic consequences. Uh, semicolon <laughs> include millennials quieting because they feel misunderstood. using a comparative sentence like people uh, perceive each other differently than they really are and then uh, we have economic consequences include millennials quitting uh, because they feel understood so yeah in that case we're compa comparing it like people perceive each other differently than they are and then economic consequences would be the other idea so we can separate it by um, a comma or semicolon, right? Um, or period. Economic consequences include millennials quitting because they feel misunderstood. So a semicolon would be a good choice. I totally agree with you. Remember that when we are reading, we have to identify where do you consider the comma uh, or semicolon, or also the comma plus the coordinated conjunction we can use. And in what sentence we can separate it. That is the main idea, guys. And let's see the number six. Uh, help me with the number six.
yes. Two different sentences, just period in the middle. <laughs> Millennials are supposedly teach savvy, period. Baby boomers are loyal to their employees, employers. Are supposedly tech savvy. Mm -hmm. Period. Baby boomers are loyal to their employers. Exactly. And that is very interesting. I mean, you are using the right um, punctuations, but the sentence is real. Baby boomers are loyal to their employers. And that happens because the generation of baby boomers are very responsible. I can see that. They don't, even though many baby boomers are characterized by not changing jobs in comparison to millennials, because millennials, they change, supposedly they change different jobs. If there are opportunities, they change, but the past generation, like baby boomers, they are very loyal to their jobs. They are very loyal to the, the companies. So in that case, we saw that we can separate the sentence in two parts. Just giving a period or maybe a comma and a coordinated conjunction. So we can use that. So the purpose about this is that we can also avoid the rundowns uh, when sentences are not separated by by comma, by periods, and also could be confusing for readers. That's uh, something bad about here. Do you have any questions or doubt? No questions for doubts? I think no, right? Nobody said anything. Okay, because of the time, we're going to check uh, some statements. And guys, don't forget to um, to work in the exercises on the platform. We really congratulate many of you guys who have been here um, working on, on the exercises on the platform. I know that most of you have a good feedback because you have been working a lot in them. And also many of you were very, very advanced in those exercises, no mistakes, working on them all the time. So this is something good guys. And as I told you, the best way to improve in English is practicing, taking a time to practice, complete exercises, reading, checking. It's, it's the best way we can. Uh, watching videos. If you don't understand a grammar structure, Go and look for a video and with um with some information about the topic, and you re review and you work on that. So that's why it's a very good recommendation for learners and especially for advanced English level to be in contact with English. I'm going to show you guys by the by the group, um, a, a kind of app that can help you to improve English. If you listen, this. Audios, it's you're gonna have a very English high English level because we do it all the time because we just have a kind of good practice. Okay, so okay, guys, so we're going to conclude the class today. I really appreciate it, and um, I I know that we have maximized your knowledge, especially in English, with different topics. So I hope to see you the next uh, Monday. This is the last class. Please try to be everybody because we have to work on a survey, uh, it is called a satisfaction survey. And I will say that in Spanish. Eh, tenemos que estar todos ese día porque es eh, una encuesta de satisfacción que siempre se hace al final de, de pues, el cada nivel. Entonces tenemos que estar ahí para eh, poder realizarlo y poder cerrar eh, este módulo de la mejor manera y a través de las diferentes prácticas. Entonces no se les vaya a olvidar eso para la próxima clase. Okay? So, thank you guys for being here and I hope to uh, have a beautiful night and also recover energy for tomorrow. Good night. Good night, teacher. See you on Monday. See you on Monday. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you.